Welcome to worship. This weekend we are celebrating Christmas in July and we are blessed to have as our guest preacher, who is not really a guest to our church family, Anita Dorf. Anita will be preaching on the first chapter of John and you will be blessed by her message and our Christmas hymns this weekend. In the life of this congregation, you are invited to our Wednesday worship service at 7 p.m. And also remember next weekend, our candidate for associate pastor will be with us. There are many opportunities. If you do not know about them, please write to info at refluthks.org to get more information. Information will also be coming in your monthly newsletter. And also remember the special congregational meeting on August 9th at 11 a.m. We are striving to be safe so that as many people as can come will be able to come as our constitution does not allow us to vote by proxy um, in special meetings of the congregation. I now invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship. the Holy One of Israel, the Word made flesh, the power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered in the name of Jesus, let us confess our sin against God and neighbor. Gracious God, in Christ Jesus you come among us as light shining in darkness. We confess our failure to welcome this light. Forgive us and renew our hope so that we may live in the light of your grace and welcome the truth of Christ the Lord. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. 
To you is born a Savior, Christ the Lord. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave us your Son to take on our human nature and to illumine the world with your light. By your grace, adopt us as your children and enlighten us with your Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from Isaiah, chapter 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy. For in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from Hebrews, chapter 1. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, 
He makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the sun, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. And the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up, and like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This beginning of John's Christmas story always causes me to tremble. I know that I am in the presence of God when I read or when I hear these words. These words are the essence of our faith. Jesus was at the beginning because Jesus is God. God became man as Jesus to redeem us and to show us the way. Jesus made God known to us. Jesus is God's word. In Greek, word is logos. Logos is far more than speech. Logos is God in action. Jesus is God in action. Jesus is word. So what are we to do with this word of God, especially in these times in which we're living? A relentless pandemic that keeps us separated. A division among us about whether to wear masks to stop the spread of the virus. A fear among our brothers and sisters of color for their lives. Hatred spewed daily to separate us further from one another. A planet that continuously surprises us with its reaction to our lack of stewardship. And I could go on and on. This is a tough time, a tough time marked by fear and uncertainty. Uncertainty about everything from when can we go back to work will, to will work be there when we go back? To will I be safe at work when I do go back? To when will our children return to school and will they be safe when they do? To will my loved one die alone because I cannot be with him? To what's going to happen to our divided world, country, state, community? And the word, Logos, God in action. And the word became flesh and lived among us. So what do we do with this word of God? We believe it. We trust it. We turn to it. We take guidance from the word that became flesh. If only this world had not been infected with evil. But it is. Our hope, our certainty, our future is in the word that defeats evil. Recently, our daughter who lives in Dallas texted us and said she was going to have to get a new phone because she keeps dropping and injuring her new, her old phone. She knew the phone was old and needed to be replaced, but the cost of replacement, wow. So David texted her and said, opportunities come when we least expect them. Mindy replied, Dad, you always find the bright side. Opportunities come when we least expect them. Jesus came to a troubled, disenfranchised world. Jesus spoke of peace and love and care for one another. Jesus practiced peace and love and care for one another. Jesus brought hope to a troubled world then and throughout the ages. Jesus is our hope. The people of Jesus' time didn't know what to, didn't know how to live with hope. But then an opportunity 
This quiet presence came among them and spoke words of love and peace. And they listened. As they listened, they found strength, strength that moved them to be with one another in a new way. Crowds gathered around this quiet presence that spoke words and did actions that healed in every way. They were amazed. They followed this quiet man. And as they followed, more and more joined until those who had been adversaries also began to listen and to watch this peaceful man change the world. They listened. They listened to understand, not to argue back. They listened to learn, not to dispute. They listened to be changed, not to give excuses. We could use some deep listening now. Jesus said in Matthew 22, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment and a second like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's rather difficult to listen to these words in isolation. Words other than Jesus' great commandment are spewed all over all the time. And most of those words do not sow love and peace, but rather division. That is not God's will for us. Instead, God sent Jesus to us then and now to show us the way out of this time of hatred and evil. And we see evidence of this working. Healthcare workers giving, and giving, listening, and consoling tirelessly. Grocery store workers restocking shelves. Telephone calls from one isolated person to another just to check in and touch. Children riding on sidewalks with chalk. Messages of love. And encouragement and many many others that we've seen this is God's will for us to hear one another even in isolation to listen as we have never listened before to experiences of all God's people now becoming more and more visible Jesus asked that we love one another all others not just the ones who look like us or who talk like us, all others. Jesus asked that we listen not with answers, but with open hearts and open minds. This opportunity, this isolation, this divisive time, this groaning planet are calling out to us. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Let none be forgotten throughout the world. Our hymn following this message gives us another opportunity to listen. James Weldon Johnson wrote this poem in 1900, a poem giving hope despite his circumstances. The poem was set to music by his brother John in 1905. The Johnsons are African Americans singing of their experience of bondage with hope and with devotion to God. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Listen, God is calling. Full of the hope that 
that the present has brought us facing the rising sun of our new day because march on till victory is won stony the road we trod into the chase the rock
us profess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Created in the image and likeness of God, we pray for the light of life in all people, for new birth among us and for communities that long for new life. You, O oh God, form your church as the body of Christ, reshape our hearts to know your grace, open our vision to see your truth and make our mouths ready to proclaim your glory. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You speak and creation comes into being. Call us by a new word to live in harmony with the fragile planet that is our common home. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You announce peace and salvation to all the earth. Give wisdom to our leaders during this pandemic as they make decisions that affect the health, safety, and livelihood of so many. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your years never end. Sustain those whose increasing years make them weary. Console the young who have already known struggle and protect newborns, including Madeline, whose years are just beginning. Bring healing to all in need, including those on our prayer list, Andy and all who mourn, including Lola's family. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your voice resounds among us. Give sufficient breath and abundant resilience to those who lead our praises. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are changeless from generation to generation. Anoint us with the oil of gladness and number us with your saints. We give thanks for Lola Wilkes, who has now joined the saints in light. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your outstretched arms, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, the light and life of the world. Amen. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time you sent your word born of Mary to shine in our darkness and to make us your children. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again when all things will be restored in him. By your Spirit, bless us and this bread and cup, that held and nourished by you, even in this time of pandemic, we may live as your children, shining with the light of your Son. Through him, our glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. 
let every heart receive our Savior. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. On this day, O God, you gave us Christ the Son to save us. As you sent the one foretold, send us now with good news for all people. Let the gladness of this feast have no end as we share with others the joy that fills us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. May Christ, who by his incarnation has filled us with grace and truth, give you peace at Christmas and always. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>